Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian Jack with Simple Man's Comics, and welcome to a brand new episode of Simple Man's Comics and Friends. We have some great guests with us tonight. You hear us talk a lot on this channel about Comic Core and how they are the Wu Tang of comics. And we've got their own YouTube channel, and they all come together to make that Wu Tang Comic Core YouTube channel. But with us tonight, we have Drew from Drew Manchu and JB from Discovery Bay Comics. What's going on, guys? Hey, thanks hey, for man. having us. Yeah, happy to be here. I'd like to think of myself as the ghost face killer of comics. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, that, that, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, we're all, I don't want to say great friends because great friends usually spend a lot of time together. We talk and we do a lot of YouTube stuff together and we met in Baltimore. That was one of the, my highlights of going to Baltimore. I think I spent more time talking to everyone from Comic Core than hunting, talking to anyone. And then I had to leave a day early, so I definitely walked away with just buying one trade paperback during Baltimore. Comics. <laughs> wow. Wow. I wish. My pocketbook <laughs> yeah. was busted. My, my budget was out of control. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, for those that aren't familiar with this show, we have this video version, but we also have the audio version. This is the flagship audio version podcast. So you can find that wherever podcasts are found, iTunes. Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all the above. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Jack DeMeo. Jack, what's going on, bud? Oh, man, Brian, you know, trying to survive the quarantine. But, of course, that's why it's so important uh, that we are here and able to talk about comics and the market and what's going on um, and keep you guys out there, all of the Silverman's Comics family, entertained as best we can. Right. So as always, we have four topics we're going to discuss tonight with that first one being the one that's on everyone's minds right now. I mean, you can't escape this no matter what. We're talking COVID-19, coronavirus, however you want to call it. But the topic we're going to discuss is comic related with all the news, with all the different states acting different quarantines, closing different businesses, however, what rules are in effect. How do we feel or how do you feel it affects the economy or foresee the impact going forward within the comic community drew we'll start with you yeah it's a strange question uh, earlier today um i went and stood in line outside of an lcs where they were only letting 10 people in at a time and the manager owner was discounting everything 50 percent off everything new books that came in last wednesday 50 percent off variants 50 percent off Action figures, statues, collectibles, RPG modules, dollar books, everything, 50% off. And they, they sell a lot, of, a lot of big sales like this throughout the year where they're going you know, to clear things out. But one thing that's never 50% off, bags and boards. I went nuts today on bags and boards. Bags and boards, 50% off. Very nice. Uh, um, definitely. And, and I, you know, I wanted to support this store because I know that they're going to be having a hard time. They're going to be doing as many curbside and mail orders as they can. But I see the owner on Facebook scrambling daily to try to augment his business plan to try to stay alive because he's run an independent LCS with multiple locations in this state for 18 years now and, and has the potential of completely going under in the next couple of weeks. Mm. Uh, it's just, it's, it, there's a lot of risk out there as a small business owner and hopefully there will be some uh, uh, measures in place by the government to kind of subsidize these businesses and give them the opportunity to stay on top of their bills and some debt forgiveness and things of that nature to help them out. But it's sad to see something that could possibly be, you know, which was a cornerstone of my collecting throughout my entire life kind of be teetering on the edge. And I wanted to go down there and make sure that, Hell, not only did I get myself a couple of key issues for, you know, pretty cheap, but make sure I drop a couple hundred bucks on the guy that has supported my collection just by being open. Uh, I think that's important. And I think that, you know, we're going to get a work stoppage from Diamond, which means we're going to get a work stoppage from the publishers, which means that everything's going to go on hold for a minute. And uh, that's like nobody the opposite wants to see that. of trickle down economics. Right. <laughs> Right. It's it, it, like, it's, it's like shrivel up economics. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it just is what it is. Uh, there's not really anything you can do about it. It's hard to say that the place where we all buy our pop figurines and, you know, our, our, our variant covers is an essential business to the community. It's also hard to say that it's not, you know, so 
I, I'm kind of worried for, for not so much for the industry, but for the direct market and the retailers that, that make their living on foot traffic going through their stores on a regular basis. What about you, JB? Um, you know, when you, when you first talked about this, the subject, I wasn't actually thinking about my head has been in the cons and everything getting canceled. Yep. I think about all those people that that's their livelihood, that they're traveling from show to show and setting up or, or they're waiting for that one or two shows a year, which is, you know, they bank everything on, on, you know, the dollars that they're going to do in these shows and they, they're not there. And, you know, after Drew mentioned the, the LCS thing, I actually get my stuff from, from Chino Comics and more, and they, they ship it in. I don't get stuff from Midtown anymore. I, you know, I stopped really supporting the bigger conglomerate type companies and tried to support more of the smaller, you know, even YouTubers. Um, and I wasn't really thinking about the effect on them as much until Drew kind of mentioned that because my guys have been open. Everybody's still been open. But now with this latest announcement, I mean, you're talking about an industry that it was working on razor margins anyway, right? There, there are comic book stores going out of business left and right all the time. And now to have something like this hit them where they're not even going to be distributed their books. And I don't know if that's going to be the next subject, but man, this is tough. And I'm seeing, you know, as we're blessed, everyone knows I'm blessed. My wife's got an amazing job and everything. And there are opportunities and I hate to say that, but man, I'm seeing key, key prices start to come down. People are reaching out to me, offering me stuff that I never would have thought would be offered at the prices that they're offering them because they're scared. And it really puts everything into perspective. They like, wow, you know, there's people I never would have thought that guy would have called me. And, and you, you get these, this is, this is a big deal, guys. I mean, I don't want everyone to make light of it. You know, we all hope for the best on the horizon, but this is a big deal. I hope these small LCSs can survive this. I hope those people that set up in cons can, can figure out a way to make it to when this is all over. And uh, just, you know, prayers and good comic book karma out to everybody out there. Man, it's, it's tough times right now. Well, Brian, I think for me, it's kind of like a, I think everybody said, kind of a different perspective, whether you're talking about like the LCS, the LCS is um, where like Drew kind of was like real heavy on. I think that is, um, he's, he's kind of like dead on with some of the effects that these really not just an LCS, but really small business America is going through right now. Um, a lot of these businesses just are not prepared to have these kinds of like instant shutdowns of business. There's already uh, states where they can't really operate right now, or like we said, we're under restriction. I, we talked about this on a previous show when we were talking with the Black Cape Comics uh, owner, Ben. We talked about the fact that like, I really challenge can an LCS stay in business just on their pull list. So even though curbside is great, I don't think that that's going to be like it sustainable as kind of like your sole uh, income source at this time. And then we talked about now the diamond announcement that uh, new books are now dropping off. So really you have to have an online presence, I think to, as a retail chain right now to be able to make it through this. Cause as of right now, the one thing that looks like is still going to be running as close to business as usual as possible is the United States postal service. Now you've also got, as um, JB mentioned, the convention circuit. And that has multiple, multiple levels to it because you have creators who not only are losing revenue from their works not being able to get out to the public, but now you also have creators who are losing revenue from these convention appearances. And a lot of these creators, that, like people that we all interview um, who are independent, um, whether it's writers or artists, they, they're not the type of people who, um, don't need that income, right? Who can sit there's, you know, the top end guys, your big time Marvel, your big time DC guys are going to be okay. And it's like that through everything. Um, whether it's, we're talking sports or the regular, um, rest of society, obviously there's people and it's tough because we mentioned that like it's, it's a hobby. So it's tough to look at. There's a lot of people out financially hurting. My family has been financially impacted, um, through the current kind of like closures that we've had to go through. I'm in retail. So, uh, um, 
we feel that directly. Uh, my kid's mother, she's in uh, food and beverage. So now they're on takeout only. So that changes the business uh, drastically. And, you know, I think that through, through this whole process, though, the interesting thing is going to be, do people stop buying comics? So we know what's going to happen with new comics, but I'm curious to see if there isn't a pivot to back issues um, it, because people can't buy those new comics and they still are going to want to buy comics. But I agree with what JB is seeing in the market right now because people need money. Um, they're uncertain. They're, they're maybe getting going their first week where like they're not getting that paycheck that they expected. And there's going to be a lot of books that are going to get offloaded. Um, that's, that's a given. I think that that's, well, I don't think that that's going to change um, for some time, but I wonder if as time goes by, if those people who are used to spending whatever their weekly comic budget is, if they won't divert that into the back issue market, plus all of us, all of us in the YouTube comic community, I mess messaged Brian. And the first thing I thought about was, well, shit, we need to make new content because the Bolo show and the uh, last call show are all based upon new comic book day releases. So we're going to be talking about different books. And I think the community is going to, is going to, it's not going to, it's not going to come to a grinding halt. We're going to talk about comics. Um, so the attention may go more to back issues. You said something really, uh, really important to me there as well, Jack, and that's uh, that your, uh, your kid's mother works in the food and beverage industry. So do mm -hmm. I, I'm essentially unemployed right now. Right. Right. I am at this point waiting to figure out what kind of unemployment benefits I'm going to be getting. I'm also going to be waiting to see whether or not I qualify for unemployment because in order to claim unemployment, you need to be actively looking for a job. Yeah, they Where can I actively right look for a job right now? Right? Like where, I mean, I would much rather be working than not working. Right. Um, but let me tell you a little something about those uh, links everybody's sending out on Facebook for these places that are desperately looking for people, desperately hiring. They're not desperately hiring. These places are not desperately hiring. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, it's it's just one of those things that I think that people will still get their comics. People still want a comic fix. People still want their funny books, man. But not having an LCS to go to, that's that's going to be tough for me. I don't buy a lot online. Um, but you know, not having an income is going to make it even harder. Mm. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to switch to a buyer's market for the time being, especially if some of those people that are trying to offload books to make up for some of that loss of income. Um, some people might not like that. Some people think it's taking advantage of people, but that's also what makes the market the market. I mean, if they're offloading books and you have the money to buy it at a good price, Heck, you're adding it to your collection, and you're still helping the person out by getting giving them some type of money over none. But it's just, I was great with, hey, at least the comic book store is open. I can still go pick it up. But um, Drew, just like you, I, I live in Maryland. I live in way southern Maryland. So, But they just announced today that they following suit with a bunch of other people. They've uh, shut down non-essential businesses. So that, of course, is comic book stores. So one thing I think about this is, the LCSs that are good entrepreneurs grind and want to do what they can. I think you're going to find some ingenuity and some innovative processes that come out of this for those to get the books that they have. Cause if you're not getting any from diamond, you're still going to have some type of inventory. Right. And I think also some of those comic book stores where maybe I'm not saying they are, but what if you have lazy people that run it and they just don't care or what if it's those LCSs that two weeks ago, they were selling Batman 89 for, $35 on release day and now they have no Comic customers coming to buy whatever fuck they do. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I also I also wonder what how I don't know how the exclusivity contract works with Diamond and Marvel and DC. Like could a sports card distributorship um step up and say, "You know what? We'll handle distributing comics." for the time being um because i know like that industry has continued to stay running it you know it because one of the biggest problems i feel like with the with the business is the fact that we have a monopoly on on mm -hmm. distributorship it, it it causes so much headaches for the lcs and they can't um comparison shop this could be 
one of those weird things where it's like, it seems like the worst thing in the world, but it, it could be for a positive if it kind of opens the business up a little bit. I have a couple of questions for Jack, actually. I know you're always kind of checking numbers and trending. Mm -hmm. Are you starting to see some, you know, some downward pricing in some of the major keys already? You know, or do you, you know, it, just in the last week, are you starting to see, I'll tell you what, I've never seen so many ASM 300s come up in the last week. Right. Um, but it's like everybody is pulling out these major keys that they've been holding on to and they're now flooding the market. Uh, and I wonder how long it's going to take before we really see a, a steep decline in some of these books because just the market's being flooded. All these people that could not set up at cons, what are they doing? They're listing these things on eBay. The, especially the major keys with the larger print runs. Um, yeah. The books like uh, New Mutants 98. Okay. Um, Plummet. The, those books yep. are going to be more attainable. Oh, we were just talking about before we started recording the uh, um, – the disaster as most people would uh, attribute it birds of prey movie. Um, I think like Harley Quinn, Batman adventures 12 is a book that would be a good one to keep an eye on to see if those prices can drop. Um, you know, with no, no movie in sight at this point and with everything else going on, I think that that book could be more attainable than it's been in, in recent memory. And I think that that's going to happen a lot. Um, I, you know, I, I think that, buying strategy is going to become really important over the next few months. Cause I think that you, we're going to have to pay attention to these trends because things are going to happen. And, and, and it, right now we're speculating and we're starting to see the beginning of it, but I think it's going to, it's going to be ever, ever changing and developing. One last question I had was, I know that you mentioned, and I agree with you, Marvel's they're fine, dude. Marvel's going to be fine. Yeah. DC I think was kind of teetering Kind of anyway, so I'm not sure how they're going to come on. But some of these smaller players, is a boom studio is going to be okay? The, I, th you know, I mean, is, I can't it? speak for any one publisher, but I yeah. will say full disclosure. I mean, I sent a message to a, a friend of ours at Boom Studios who, and I was, because the first thing I said was, man, I'm sorry, because like Boom came out this morning with a very aggressive um, plan to help to help retailers, full returnability, uh, oh, wow. free incentives of like back issues that they've got left in stock to stores just to ramp up cash flow. Um, they were gonna include thank you variants for every issue um, coming out going forward, one per store thank yous to give, again, added cash flow for stores. All of the ex exclusives for all of the conventions that got canceled they were going to send to stores to again added cash flow, um, and then yeah, as Brian mentioned, all books would be returnable. So Boom was getting real aggressive with like we need to help retailers out, um, and then also they were opening up this like communication to be able to help stores direct um, marketing to their stores. But I worry about the small publishers. I worry about the Vault Comics and the you know and the. Um, you know, a, a Mad Cave Studios and all of yeah. these these small publishers who you don't I don't know what their financials are. Yeah. So you know, it, it, however Black long, press, Black right? Press comics. However, the margins in comics are so small, especially the the the, the monthly floppies. Um, I don't know if many of them will be able to take these long hits. And a lot of these writers, um, they're already freelance guys. They're already. Um, a lot of them work in other jobs. Uh, there, are, there's just going to be a lot of people who I don't know the the impact. I've thought about that. The impact on the publisher could be huge, and that's why I wonder if some of the smaller publishers. I think if it's a really a financial crunch for them, they'll start self distributing any way they can. Whether it's they yeah. get another distributor or they start shipping themselves. Shipping um, direct, yeah, yeah. I think they'll do. I, I. I'm interested to see what Boom's going to do after having put this huge statement out in the morning and then having it. By the afternoon, the their afternoon. distribution system has said, nah, we're not doing that. Yeah. Yeah, because everything in their statement said, you know, it would be fulfilled by Diamond. It's fulfilled by Diamond. So, um, you know, that's, I said that, man, that's real difficult because I know they probably put a lot of effort into that. In Credit Image Comics, who also um, – put out a statement saying that they were going to be doing returnable comics for customers. Um, it wasn't quite as like in depth and um, incentivized as booms, but still also was very much retailer friendly. They talked about increasing the discount rate and things like that. So 
I, I like the fact that the two leaders in independent comics were coming out trying to do their part. I wish we would have heard from Marvel and DC before this happened, because I think that that could have had an impact too. But You know what? You're, you're right in one point that there is going to be some innovation. The, way, the business model will change. It's never going to be the way it was before. There are going to be people that are going to not make it through this, but the people that do make it, they're going to come up with some innovative ways to move their products and uh, this is definitely going to be a game changer to the industry. Yeah, and I think it's going to be sad because we're going to see some good old mom and pop shops um, that are just not going to make it. But I do think, you know, there will be kind of almost a reset of the market where only the strong survive. And that's not a, a, a negative to anybody who isn't able to through this because this is unprecedented but it, to the businesses who have been working to try to make sure they're selling on like multiple platforms and um that are working all kinds of new age marketing and in new media and things like that i think they'll survive i think they'll make it through um if you've been sleeping on all of those avenues you know yeah you're gonna you're you're facing an uphill battle at this point i hope you have savings yeah. so with that being said let's shift gears for a second we just talked about it. So what is going to be everyone's buying strategy over the next few months? Drew, we'll start with you again. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be buying a whole lot. Um, just be just in order to be financially prudent. I threw some money around in my LCS today. It's kind of the last opportunity, last hurrah to do so in my opinion. Um, if you know, the books are coming out, I'm going to try to find a way to get them. Um, but I'm certainly not going to be, spec buying or you know hunting dollar bins when you know my pull list is you know at, at a certain level I, i'm going to be pulling back on that and i think you you just have to adapt and i think the customers have to adapt in the same way that the you know the retailers have to adapt and, and the publishers have to adapt everybody is going to come out of this changed from the experience in one way or another i um it's i'm bummed right now with this latest news I wasn't planning on changing anything. Like I mentioned, you know, right now, if there's nothing that needs to change, this thing is self-sustaining with the couple of things that JB has got going on with his channel. It, you know, it's paying for itself. And in the niche market that I'm currently in, I don't see that really changing because I'm really dealing in dollar books. If you see what my channel is doing and I don't think dollar books are always going to be there. You know, if you, when you're cutting back your spending, you stop buying your $8 books and your $5 books. You start looking at the quarter bins and the 50 cent bins. If you still want to buy books. Yeah. So hopefully stocks. Yeah. Uh, hopefully for me, you know, the, the, the channel still generates enough money to continue to buy the way I normally would. But if there's not new titles coming out and I was already trimming back the new titles, Man, I really do hope that some of these independents decide to distribute independently, you know, because yeah. those are the one, those are some of the best reads. Some of the best stuff I'm reading right now is coming from Boom and, you know, Mad Cave. And, and if they can figure out a way to keep distributing, I'm going to be cool. If they don't, man, I'm about to read a lot of old books. You know, and there's a lot of stuff I haven't read that's still fantastic. And it's just going to, that's going to be my change of the focus. I'm going to probably, Start looking at those storylines that I missed out on, like Saga. I'm going to finish that run. And, uh, you know, Southern Bastards and all these great titles that I've been just been introduced to in the last year. Let's finish those in the next year and see if this, you know, blows over. Yeah, I got 40 long boxes. We were having a conversation earlier on Facebook, a couple of people, and they're like, oh, man, well, what, you know, if new books aren't coming out, what are we going to talk about? I'm like, I'm send them a picture of my rack of long boxes said, I'm pretty sure I'll find something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So like we were just kind of like in our previous conversation, we were talking about too, like the, the downturn in the market. So I also want to be able to, when I'm buying over the next several months, take advantage of opportunities that haven't presented themselves and may not present themselves again. And while right now it's kind of early in that, that kind of process where we, as we talked about, we're starting to see keys get listed in quantities that are starting to drive prices down. I think that that's going to continue because if somebody needs money, they're looking for it in two, three, four, five, six hundred dollar shots at once as best yeah. they can. So they're listing those top end books. They're not listing those 10 to 15 to $25 books. So what I've noticed is there hasn't been the 
a crazy influx of those books. So I'm gonna go ahead and give away my strategy for the next several months. I am going to be listing a lot of unnecessary books from, from my PC, from my reseller inventory, from stuff like variants, $15, $20 eBay variants. I'm gonna move that stuff out. Number one, because we're in an un, unstable financial time and I've been impacted with my income, but also because if I would rather take that money right now and repurpose that into key issues that number one are gonna stand the test of any financial downturn, even if keys take a hit. These movies are coming back, right? We know, like, this is why people can't be crazy doom and gloom with the comic market, because at the end of the day, these movies are coming back eventually. And when they do, all of these comics will come back and rise. So if books drop off, my hope is to be able to participate and to buy them. But kind of as Drew said, like this is not the best financial time to be sitting there like, oh, you know, and I'm in full disclosure, I'm not in, in a personal financial position to be like, oh, I'm gonna spend 10K over the next couple months. So if I'm gonna do any sort of active and aggressive buying, I'm gonna have to turn. But I've got plenty of that stuff. And I just think it's time to, to purge that, that stuff that, that you can kind of live without. Um, and, and maybe you're, you're going to short sell a little bit. But I've kind of, like I said, got that hypothesis that I think $25 books are going to get listed far less frequently than $100 books. And at the end of the day, I'd rather take the money from those $25 books, put it into those major keys and, uh, you know, wait for the rebound on a lot of that stuff, especially some of that no brainer stuff. Some of that stuff, like we've talked about on the downside of three up, three down, like eternal stuff, eternal stuff has to rebound. It just has to. So, uh, you know, now is the time to get in and start buying at the prices that they've dropped to. Yeah, I'm just going to keep mine short. My plan is like we were talking about earlier where you're seeing those keys that you're talking about being listed low. I think you're going to start seeing more of that. So I'm just going to start not buying small books. I'm going to look at picking my target, finding some silver age and bronze so, graded keys that I want in my PC. Yeah, I don't buy a lot as it is. So I'm going to be selective with what I choose. I'm going to start looking. Um, and if I can find stuff for a decent price, that's probably when I'm going to pick up uh, Drew and I were talking before we started recording. Also, I don't buy as much as I used to because you got to store it somewhere, and I'm running out of storage. I, am I don't at sell that much, so I'm not going to unload that much. So I'm pick my shots, and I've also been. We've talked about it here. We I've shifted a little bit. I still buy comics, but I also started buying <laughs> some trading cards. So, um. Not oh, much. You're one of I'm those guys. Changed, one of those, those trading things. card guys. I, I want to mention the space thing. I am absolutely at that. My wife and I came into this office. We came up with a number. We bought all this IKEA. We put it on here and said, "This is the space. This is it. You're not going to pile stuff up behind the doors. We're not going to have stuff on. This is the space. This is the number. And literally, as I am getting stuff in that I want to keep in my PC, I just took in a big, like 54 books of Silver Surfer. And I had to look at the collection and pull 54 books out of it. There's no space. For every book coming in, something is coming out. That is the new strategy because I just don't have the space. So pivoting a bit from the coronavirus, and now we've got an opportunity to take advantage of the fact that we've got two YouTubers, two members of the YouTube comic community with us right here. And as we talked about in the intro from the comic core, and we can kind of get into a little bit of YouTube topics. Now this kind of plays into comics and comic collecting as well. But one thing that kind of Brian and I are curious about, it's something that we discuss regularly, uh, is, is kind of comic burnout. It can happen uh, at almost seemingly out of nowhere where you're kind of uh, uh, doing a lot, whether it's content or uh, collecting or you're in the middle of con season and you just kind of, you, you get a little burnt out on it and it, it can be the comic collecting side or comics in general, the genre or the YouTube side. And I'm curious, does it, is it something that occurs with you guys and how do you deal with it? Oh, man, I'll get this out of the way because if there's anybody who burns out any faster on YouTube uh, or any brighter than Discovery Bay, I don't, I don't know somebody. Um, but, yeah, I, I get burnt down on both ends of it. Um, 
I think for me, what really draws me into the community and the comic book collecting at the same time is the same thing. And that's story. And if these stories resonate with me enough that I want to make a video about them, or um, I, I see, I don't do a whole lot of speculation talk on my own channel or even on the comic or it's all pretty much story based. So it's like, I was down on comics for a while where I was just like not reading anything I, that really resonated with me. It's like there were a few handful full of titles at Marvel that I was still getting that inspiration, that spark from when I would read them every week. Um, a few indies here and there that I just would really grab me. But like Hoxpox, the House of X, Powers of Ten, Jonathan Hickman, X-Men stuff just like piqued my interest so much. It was so well paced in the way that those stories were kind of doled out that every week I was like, oh man, here we go. I got to crack this book open. I got to get as much information out of it as possible. I got to make a video. I got to read my comments for three days afterwards being like, who wants to talk to me about this? You know, and then, then go on a live show on the weekend and be like, Hey, who didn't hear me talk about X-Men all week long? Cause I'll talk about it again. And, and it's when those books come out, those stories that really grab my imagination, they really reinvigorate me. Um, and, and it's, it's really cyclical. It's gotten to a point now where it's like, right now there are very few books that when they come out, I'm like, Oh, I got to read this in the parking lot before I leave the LCS, you know, but occasionally those books do come up right now for me, it's power Rangers, Ninja Turtles, like that book, when it comes out, I'm like, Oh man, it's not, oh, it's going to be a nice fun run. Batman. So I'll sit down for 10 minutes in, in the LCS parking lot and read it before I go home. Uh, those those are the things that really that really get me going. But like as far as burnout, yeah, we all experience burnout. It's all all cyclical, um, and sometimes you, you get inspired and you go hard, and that's both in in the reading and the collecting and in the making videos. And sometimes you just might rather sleep in and you know watch something on Netflix and kind of veg out for a little while. And like, oh, I read a story. Was it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. But I don't need to make a video about it. You know, um, and, and those are just kind of the cycles that that I feel like I go through in all of my hobbies. Baby, how about you, my man? Well, you know, um, if if you watch the channel at all, you got to know that uh, I have a lot of fun and I I want to have fun with it. I I'll be honest with you, I did burn out and I've taken some extended little periods of time. I was going at it real hard. You know, I was, I want to, I was proving a point to some people in the family, my wife, uh, that I could uh, get to a thousand subscribers. And I did, I mean, it was quick. I got it there in like seven months. And, and then I, you know, you looked at watch time and it wasn't there. And then someone said, look at your analytics. I'll tell you what, don't look at your analytics guys. Don't, <laughs> don't do it. Just don't. I mean, just have fun just have fun because if you start taking it too serious then you're going to be disappointed by something you'll put out a video that doesn't get a click-through rate and you're going to get disappointed discouraged and and then the whole thing starts to spiral on itself i don't do that anymore it's just have fun and take the time that you need right now i'm i'm not basically i'm not allowed on youtube in front of the camera on a saturday or a sunday except for the last saturday of the month I give it to the comic book community and I host an event, which I'll talk about at the end. But that's good for balance, guys, to, to just get away from it and, and let make sure everyone knows. And that's I have that, hey, I'm off on Saturdays and Sundays. I got a family. I'm just not going to do it. I may be in the chat and I'll say I'm hiding out in the garage because I love it. I love the community. Sometimes I just can't keep myself away. You know, I want to be in the chat. But burnout's real. And sometimes I don't get to read my books and I feel that YouTube prevents me from reading, which is why I do this was to read the books. So every once in a while, look and just say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do a show Friday through Monday or take four five, six days straight. And people will be reaching out to you. Hey, are you okay? You okay? And I'm like, yeah, I just need to read some books. I just need to reset. You need to read book, mm -hmm. reset. The cool thing about YouTube, anybody that's doing it, it's going to be here when you get back. It's going to be here when you get back and you will be welcome back with open arms. You know, 
for me, I've got Patreon supporters. So I was like, oh, I can't be taking a bunch of time off. There's people that are kind of dependent on me to put out content. And then, no, dude, every single one of them was like, no, take the time. Your Patreon supporters are your supporters because they care about you and your channel. I you support know? you on they Patreon, you JB, and I say take your time. <laughs> right? Take, the t- take your time. So when, when, you're, when your supporters, your subscribers are telling you, do take the time, do what you got to do for the family, it helps make the whole thing better. And you don't get burned out as often, um, but you do get burned out. And what you do, you just take that time. YouTube's going to be here, man. It'll be here when you get back. I might not be a Patreon supporter, but I do throw a random super chat in here or there. And I just want to tell you that, um, chop, chop, get these videos out, bro. I don't want you taking your time. Awesome. Drew. Give me that content. A little bell. (laughs) Chop, chop. Yeah. I've suffered burnout from both comics and YouTube. And it also, a lot of it relates to the same thing JB was talking about where, uh, family comes uh, you work full time. You got a family. Um, you're do, doing videos. I mean, Jack and I, what we record Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every week, um, yep. every other Monday. Now for a while there, I was recording also every Sunday for weekly picks. Um, so not only are you filming those, but you also have to find time to edit stuff up. Mm. And editing takes a not lot. Not for JB. Filming. Not anymore. I gave up <laughs> editing. Unless you're doing live streams, which <laughs> is a great alternative. But um, so you like, Everyone else was talking. You ride some highs and then you come down and you crash for a little bit and the always find time to, like you said, give yourself a shot in the arm, rejuvenate yourself. Sometimes just stepping back for a minute, um, reading some books. But one thing that helps me, especially with YouTube is I go watch other YouTube channels that aren't even comic related. I'll go watch like Peter McKinnon does awesome YouTube channel on photography and video and, and uh, t- some tech YouTube channels. And it's just, you're not watching it so much from the tech point of view. It's just something that gets you motivated to be a creator again and go out and start making videos. And then you pick up on stuff that they did that you're like, hey, maybe I can incorporate that into comic videos somehow. And that's kind of how Jack and I always try to not, I won't say stagnant is not the right word, but always try to continue to be more creative and talk about comics, talk about reading comics. Jack is more on the um, selling side of it than I am. I'll fully admit that. So we have a good yin and yang and it comes and goes. I'll tell you the biggest, the hardest part I want to talk about burnout. I don't know if it's burnout or what, but we took that Christmas break. Yeah. And it took us, I'd say almost through January to like get back into that group. We were kind of doing some videos yep. and it was just hard. It was almost like, I was like, <laughs> kind of hope Jack doesn't show up. <laughs> kind of looking for an excuse not to film, but um, I enjoy it. And like you said, and everyone said, the best part about all of it, especially with YouTube, is the community. You meet some great people. I wish that I could give more of my time to a lot of people that ask for it because I always mm-hmm. feel so bad when they're like, hey, can you come on? Or hey, do you want to collab and do a video on this? Me, I, I want to do it 100% of the time. The schedule sometimes gets in the way with yeah. I at the same time where, you know, my wife doesn't really say anything about it, but it's always in the back of your conscience oh, yeah. going, Hey, if I want to stay married, she, I got to, she like, don't have to say anything to you to give you that look. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got to make sure I divide up some family time. And like uh, JB was saying, usually the Saturday, Sunday, no videos. That's part of the reason why weekly picks went away. One, a lot of people are doing weekly picks. So I felt like it wasn't taking anything away from the community, but two, it was a weekend film that I was making that was kind of blurring that line of getting in the way of family time. So I kind of pulled it back. And I think you get burnt out for a lot of different reasons. Like Brian, you and I have had, you and I talk about this a lot. Um, and I think the point of this question and discussion is, you know, we get, I know that we get a lot of people who are up and coming YouTubers, prospective YouTubers, and they ask us a lot of questions about, um, you know, what it's like to run a channel. And obviously like there's bigger channels than us. Um, there's smaller channels than us, but, but we feel pretty secure in, in our growth and size. And, and I, I think I want to impress on people is that like you go through it, it happens and it doesn't last forever and different things can pull you out of it. Right. So 
for me, I don't really get burnt out from YouTube. I really enjoy this, but I have the easy job because I come on the mic and, and just talk my shit. Um, I just have to show up and be very opinionated and um, stir up the controversy. That's my job, right? So all I got to do is come on the mic and be me. And I recognize within our duo of me and Brian, um, the editing that he does takes a toll because every piece of content, I could do five more pieces of content a week. Um, Brian could not possibly, I could burn him out. And sometimes I've, Brian's so great. If I ask to do something, he always says yes. Um, but the thing is, he will then, I notice, will start to get burnt out. And his passion won't be there. And Brian is way better and, and way more fun to be working with when he's excited. So I've had to learn and through our partnership that there's like a balance and to not push too hard and to do, let things happen and progress naturally um where i get burnt out sometimes on hobby just in general right because like we we all are so passionate about it um whether or not it's dealing with all of the things we have to deal with in the youtube comic community whether it's hate in the chat or hate in the in the comments or um just some debate or disagreement or you know like i said i'm very opinionated of, of going on in the market uh or just things you see that you don't always agree with that are just inherent with social media, no matter what you're doing. Um, sometimes I'll get kind of turned off to it, but what helps me is, and I know we're all kind of like do this a little bit. I know J JB, I see you've got like Funko's back there and Drew, I know you're an action figure collector. So kind of taking time to like put myself into some of my other collectible passions. Um, I will take a couple days and really not focus on comics and I will focus on sports cards or action figure collecting or, um, you know, you know, those are really my main other two, but, uh, sne sneakers used to be my thing, but I've gotten beyond that. Pogs. So, <laughs> Pogs. Oh, I was a pog master back in the day. Next con, you guys bring bring all your pogs. I'll bring an empty tube and a slammer, and I'll and go a slammer. Yeah, the metal pockets, slammer. My pockets full of your pogs, Jack. I think you hit the nail on the head when you you said that Brian is better when he's excited about something. Yeah, and and that's the whole thing with burnout is that comics are fun, and YouTube is fun, right? Pudding is fun. Putting five days a week, that's great. Putting seven days a week, that's even better. Pudding all, every day of the month. I don't want any pudding anymore. Well, we got tapioca. Ooh, that's exciting. Let me get into that. That's kind of like every time I feel like I'm burnt down to a certain point, something else happens in either the YouTube community or in comics that gets me excited again. Yep. That, that, yeah, it, it comes out of nowhere, right? right. Like, that the lows are so great because she's like, a, a low in, in comic collecting and YouTube is like, nah, I don't want to do anything. Mm. Right. That's like, but then the moment you get that inspiration, I mean, I started doing these these little videos on the Comic Core, just snippets of our live shows, kind of cut into like a little, hey, here's what this show is basically about. And it was super easy. It was super fun. It made me laugh my ass off. And I got so excited. I made like four of them in a row. Good stuff. Now I'm kind of like waiting for us to do more shows so I have more content to kind of <laughs> – pick for well, and that's also where like brian said like the weekly picks right so like he mentioned he got kind of burnt out doing that for not because he was necessarily like tired of doing a video but brian and i something that we're, we're we like to pride ourselves in being creative the most epically burnt out we ever got was when we were doing that terrible cbsi hot 10 video that we wanted no part in really doing and we were trying to force ourselves to do because we thought it was good for the channel and ultimately it was just making us miserable and we had the good sense a few weeks in mostly thanks to brian to be like you know what no mas we're done with this we're going to move on and instead we're going to create our own thing with the last call show which instantly gave us that like oh man, I'm pumped up to do this now. This is exciting. Um, and so you got to kind of like do that from time to time. We found like making subtle changes to the channel will do that because it's really easy to be motivated. We've been fortunate um, with some channel growth recently. So like it's really easy to be motivated when you're seeing that growth. 
we went through a couple lean months where things didn't move at all. And when that happens, you have to really push because that's when you find yourself getting frustrated because you're throwing things up against the wall. And right. it's, it's just not that algorithm doesn't make sense to any of us. None of us know how the hell it works. So we're, you're just kind of throwing things up against a wall, hoping, hoping it pans out. And when you go through those lean months where you're just not seeing the growth you want, but you feel like you're putting so much effort in. That's when it's easy to get burnt out and you've really got to watch yourself. Take a step back and, and do some, find some sort of method that works for you to reset. And, and for us, it's new content. New content has done that for us. Always keep it fresh. Yeah, absolutely. Now I mentioned in all of that, uh, experience that I had with, you know, sometimes can burn me out comments, things like that. Being a YouTube uh, community member and being in a essentially fellows a position of prominence can have some positives and some negatives. I would love to hear maybe a short story uh, on each of those from you guys. What, what's a, a great YouTube community experience and maybe uh, a not so great one? And uh, you will start with Drew? you, Drew. Um, yeah, I think I've met some of my best friends through through youtube and comics and just i've i've got a lot of really great lifelong friends and, and but they're not all into my nerd shit right and you, you said it earlier it's like when you come on here all you got to do is just be you you just got to be excited and talk about comics and i found that when i'm on youtube and i'm just excited and i have an opinion and i'm talking about comics and i'm just being myself and just putting myself out there sometimes i see people are interested in it and it's a feeling that I've never had before. It's like I see my friends, like, uh, well, actually, you know, Miles Morales isn't Spider-Man's son. He's, I hear but he's, got, he's a black Spider-Man. He's Spider-Man's black son. Like, and I have to explain to my friends, but I take two hours to do it. And then they look at me like, we didn't care. We didn't <laughs> care about any of this. And it's fun to have an environment where people are passionate about the same things. Um, Collecting comics and reading comics is a very solitary endeavor. Um, it, you, you sit down, you turn the pages, you absorb the story, you bag and board those issues, you catalog them in your long boxes. And not many of my IRL acquaintances or friends would give a shit about any of it, right? But when I started watching YouTube and I found some of these channels, some of which that aren't even around anymore, um, I, I met these people that were into the same things I was into. And you find your tribe. It's really easy on social media and in this internet digital age to find your tribe. It's really easy that way. And the same way you, you run across so many different personalities that there's lots of drama and high school, middle school bullshit that comes along with any community. Um, especially when you, you're talking about keyboard warriors in a lot of senses. So I would say I don't have any specific stories, but I will shout out a few specific names. Um, great legend. Um, that guy said my name when I was in a live show chat. Right. And I was like, immediately a part of the community. Right. He's like, Oh, we got a new guy in here. Drew Manchu. What's going on. Right. I haven't seen you in here before. And then immediately other people are like, Hey man, what's going on. And I got in conversations in his chat room just from him shouting out my name. You were twirling around in circles with like sound of music. I mean, I'm right? not like not, I'm not, I wasn't fanboying or anything, but it was, it was, it was nice. It felt yes, personal. I it felt like yeah, I, I was saying. being uh, given a hand, right. And somebody pulled me in to the community. Um, and alternatively there's, there's trolls out there, man. And, but for the most part, it's just like, there are people out there who do bad business and you hate to see that because it's just so much easier just to do good business and be a good member of the community and, and give more than you take. Um, and, and there's a lot of fake people out there on YouTube that are just like, Hey man, you know, they're all buddy, buddy and friends to your face. And then not when you're not around. And, and that's to be expected in any sort of human interaction um, but as a microcosm, I think that there's more positive than there is negative in the comic book community. And I think when you look at the smaller channels, when you look at, like I was on a stream, Jigs Kingdom did a live stream the other day for 38 hours. 
right? And I was on his live stream. I remember when Jigs didn't do videos, he just bought mystery slabs and auctions, right? And then he started doing videos and now he's doing live streams. And now I'm having conversations with kids who have like 120 subscribers who just started six weeks ago and they're all bright eyed and bushy tailed. And, and sometimes drama comes up and they're like, wait, wait, what is this? What's going on? And, and it's, it's fun to see the new people cycle through. Um, and, uh, and sometimes those trolls, man, they'll stick around for a while, but you just got to keep your head high and keep moving. Great advice, Drew. Great advice. I can give you a couple of stories. I, I, my, my favorite positive story. Now, first of all, it's hard to describe the comic book community to people who aren't in it. Oh, it's impossible. Know? It's, it's impossible. One, you know, I'm a nerd, you know, and these are all, we're all, we're all kind of nerdy. You know, we like, we like statues and Funko Pops and comic books and nobody else in my court. They're all great guys, but they look at me all cross-eyed like you, what, you know, just it, like you're not so. So first being part of a community where you share interests is, is one, but this community does stuff like send books to each other. It's incredible. It, it, it's called an AOK and I've never heard of anything like it. And the comic book community does it to a level that you've never even seen. The books that are flying back and forth to people. I have got a stack of post-it notes here where if somebody mentions a book that they're missing, I'm writing it down because sure enough, if I got it in my PC, I'll pull it and send it to them. Giant it, because size I'd X rather have it in his collection. Giant size X-Men number one. Giant size X-Men number one. Giant size X-Men number one. But I don't see you this, taking notes. Yeah, right. This community is amazing that way. But- very similar to what Drew said, there's a lot of the high school mentality in this community. My first, my favorite story is my first con is Chicago C2E2. Oh, and I'm wonderful. walking the floor and I'm pretty much a newer YouTuber. You know, I'm doing really well. And the first time you have somebody walk up to you and they know who you are, but you don't know who they are because they watch you. That's a cool feeling. Cause they're like, JB and I'm like yeah that's me because <laughs> you know what I look like but I don't know what you look like <laughs> that is a cool feeling right it's it's something that just you're you're walking on air like I can't believe that just happened this guy recognized me and the first time you get to meet all of these people you're looking up to the first time I got to meet Drew or the great legend or C Woodard or any of the people from the college look up to me because I'm taller him. That is a great feeling. Then you got the opposite end of the spectrum. And I'm not going to give a, a, a specific example because the person isn't doing it as much anymore. And if I, now if I mention it, it'll come back. But I went for like a month straight, guys, where as soon as I clicked create a live stream, by the time I got over to my channel to add it to a playlist, I already had two thumbs down. Well, I was like, man's comics. That's how. Holy moly! <laughs> First of all, this guy's got me on like some crazy post notification or something because he's literally getting to my video before I can get to my own video. And then everybody in the community tells you, "Ah, don't worry about it. You've Badge made it. You've made it. You know, if you got a hater, you've made it." Well, for me, for my personal, that was tough. That was that was really tough to know that there's somebody that flat out hates me. Right. Before I even put anything out, you know, I haven't even, I'm setting up a stream for disco after dark at seven 30 in the morning. Why are you thumbing that down? Right. <laughs> I haven't even told you who I'm going to have on the show. You take three hours out of your day to make something and somebody's just like, <clears throat> and you're like, why, why would you do that to somebody? So that's the worst part of the community, but you got to get over it because yeah. ultimately they'll get tired of you. They'll get tired of trolling you. And I did notice that it got worse when I mentioned it in my live stream that it bugged me. Cause when I mentioned that it bugged me, then it was like, it was like clockwork. But when I just stopped talking about it entirely, probably guy got bored probably. And he just doesn't do it anymore. I still get one. There's still one today. We gave away, we gave away a bunch of comic books on my channel. Why would somebody thumbs that down? I mean, we just gave away comic books for three straight hours, free comic books. And somebody doesn't like that. Right. So, yeah, it goes both ways. You know, um, my channel, it was built on highlighting other community members and I caught heat 
for highlighting different community members from all the different groups. Now, we may not want to mention it in this stream, but I'll be the one that does it. Guys, there was a big riff in the community when the list and all the change in the list, and you guys are going to do the list and the list and the list and the list and the list. And there was a big divide of all these people. And I'm trying to just highlight everybody. But you see that there are clicks. It's just the way it is. You got to teach my kid now that these, you know, they're already in third, fourth grade. You're going to have clicks and that they're going to be clicks in YouTube. Just get over it. I just say all, all people are welcome. I got nothing but love for you, homie. That's a little thing I play on my, on my, on my show and people are arguing in my chat. I just bust that out and, uh, and we roll because overall the community is really positive and you've got your two or 3% people that are going to be haters and they're always going to be there. So Brian, I think I can guess with you, but I could be wrong. Is JB's example your negative example or is there something else that strikes a chord with you? Yeah. I mean, I think we have we could probably could take a, pick from a bunch of negative examples <laughs> yeah. it's just part of having a channel i think like yeah. you guys brought it up and i'll tell you one thing if you if you are a new creator don't get discouraged because it's going to happen at some point it's going to happen someone's going to thumbs down you someone's going to put a comment that's going to strike you the, and i'm perfectly honest the first time it happens it's going to bug you it i is. mean unless you're super thick skin i mean you you are happy to be creating you're happy people are watching something and then you get that first negative comment and it kind of bugs you for a minute but that's the first one of many like they've been saying and by the t certain amount of time you're just like huh and then you kind of reply to them and if they keep doing it there's a hide user from channel button that comes in really handy yeah. you find out that they're really just a troll and it's not just someone that's just hey disagrees with you and wants to converse about it that's fine but if they're straight trolling hit that hide user from hide channel user. button and they're going <laughs> That makes a lot of sense too, which you just said there is like, if they're just a troll and not somebody who, who, who just wants to have a discussion and has a difference of opinion. And I run into that a lot in this community. And I think that a lot of that has to do with, you know, a good portion of us are very socially awkward individuals, right? And you just want to interact with the video you just watched. And, you know, out of the five minute video, two seconds of it really ticks somebody off. And they might just hit the thumbs down button because of one word you said they didn't care for or a mispronunciation or for the dumbest reason possible. And their mean comment, just because it's text over the internet, could not be that mean a comment. We all read text with our own inflection. So it's sometimes it's just kind of hard to interact with people that you don't know via this platform and uh and sometimes it can be confusing so it's i always think it's best not to take anything personally i uh, i have so many so many examples of posting a video and having a thumbs down yeah. before you know they could have possibly watched yeah we put premieres up and by the time they premiered right they're they're thumbs down before they they even right. premiere so it's like so that's that yeah. for me that for me it, 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 there's as brian kind of mentioned right so like for us this first year of Brian and I teaming up and then like really trying to like push this channel. Um, it was a growing experience for me because there were, there was probably if I was to sit here and think about like, and the ones that strike me right off the top of my head are hot negative. Last call. It, it, like it's yeah. Hot 10 and last call. Right. It's the, the, in their negatives, right. They're like these monumental moments that changed our channel. But as you kind of talked about, it's like persevering. So with the hot 10, with the change up, there was so much about that situation that I never saw coming. So I was constantly. Especially with the people that was demanded an explanation of. Yeah. Well, we it, put out an explanation. It was, it was multi-tiered. So um, we're dealing with CBSI. Um, at the end of the day, it's not our final decision. We supported this decision, but it wasn't our final decision. It wasn't our end all be all decision, but Brian and I took 95% of the heat for it as if it was our decision. Um, that frustrated me. I was frustrated as Brian mentioned with the community kind of pointing at us saying like, you owe us this or you owe us that. And we're sitting here like, well, we'd love you guys, but we don't owe you anything. 
Um, and, and I don't have to tell you all the inner workings. Now we're comfortable talking about it openly, but at the time there were some restrictions to being able to talk about. And then finally, one thing that, um, full disclosure, uh, who knows if this will make it in the final edit, but th that fully was a learning experience for me is dealing with relationships. So like comic Tom and I had built a very good relationship in my mind. Um, and then with the process of the separation with the hot 10, uh, we had intended at least verbally to maintain that relationship. And somehow that fell apart. And I think we could probably both accuse each other, but that's the unfortunate thing about the politics that come into play a lot of times with this. So there ends up becoming so much that you could talk about about that has happened since then where like things like jb's talking about where now jb who really i feel like is one of like the people i never understood why anyone ever had a problem with their show being on his he's providing a service for everybody he's i call him the, the tv guide of, of the comics community because he's letting you know when channels he's advertising your channel for free his success ultimately benefits all of us yeah that was one thing we were talking as soon as we saw it we're like this is something the community definitely needs. smart idea and it's a way to ing immediately jb ingratiated himself with so many people because there was no reason so when the hot 10 thing happened i never even thought that like now there's two hot 10 shows i thought and I'll be honest with you, I'm the one who told Tom, like, hey, just do the key collector list. It'll work perfectly. Um, and I thought, okay, he'll do the key collector list. We'll do the CPSI list. There'll be two different lists. But the, let's be honest, if you go on YouTube and type in top 10, there's dozens of lists. Right. Oh, kind right. Of so I thought, more than two people doing this gimmick. Right. So <laughs> I'm thinking, so I'm thinking, no big deal. I was so naive to that situation because it turned into this whole, like, you can't have both lists on a show or you can't have, you can't have both people or you got to pick a side, which was never an intention. I was the super amateur YouTuber. Why did you take it away? Yeah. And it was like, just right. So then, so then we went through months of catching negative comments of catching, uh, like you want to talk about down votes as soon as you start, like 50 down votes as soon as you start. And then the other one was the last call show. So then we pivot and we're like, all right, we're done with this. We're doing it our own way. We're getting away from all of this. We're creating this new show. It's for the community. It's for retailers. It's for the industry. It's going to help everybody. And a, a Facebook speculation group decides that they own the rights to all this information and nobody else should disseminate this information until they say so. And therefore, we are violating some sacred speculation code. And they launched these like attacks where they would like post our video and tell all their members to downvote. But all they were doing while it was frustrating for a few weeks. Driving traffic. Driving traffic, giving us engagement. It was rallying our troops to, to hit the thumbs up to try to combat that. Um, I look back at all the frustration through all of those situations and I feel silly. Because it was really, we made it through it. It was all for nothing. Um, we stayed it's true. Not me. I just... Paid yeah, it's true yourself. Pam. Well, your your advice to, to you, your kids. your advice to everybody about thick skin. Um, thick skin doesn't come naturally to most people. It, it certainly did not come naturally to me. Especially um, when you are one of those people that likes the community. You want to be involved in the community. So then, when you get a negative aspect of the community, you're like, "Oh, what the heck? What?" It just right. It's like, why does right. somebody got personal beef with me? Like, you get to a point where. You feel like your subscribers are your friends. But then you also have to be very self-aware because I had to look at myself in the mirror a few times and say, if I'm going to take a hardline stance on certain topics, I have to understand that I'm opening myself up for somebody to disagree. People don't like that. I think uh, Incredible Hulk 180 is the first appearance of Wolverine. I oh, know it clearly I, is. I'm I, know that, I know that it pisses a lot of people off that I'm unapologetically unwavering in this topic. And I would debate anybody for hours on it. Read but, a Marvel Universe handbook for once. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is it, when I say that, I, I know that that's going to trigger a certain people. So I try to tell myself, like, I ask for it in, in some instances. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and so I can't, right, I, I can't, I can't, if you're going to play the heel, you know, 
then you got to ask for you got to ask for the heat and in the Baron and, Corbin of YouTube. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I, sometimes I feel like I got that X Pac heat on YouTube. Yeah, and you know, I'm like, I come into a room, I'm like, hey guys, what's going on? And people are like, oh god, we're not going to talk about this again. I'm like, oh, god, <laughs> did I really do that? Did I make myself that guy? But they, yeah, you sign up to be that guy sometimes. I, right. I'm, the, I'm the king of hardline opinions. Well, it's like when we were on the Comic Court and you took the hard stance against DC Comics. Brian and I are two big DC Comics fans. I had fun in that conversation, though. Right, but like that's the point. Is, so we were I both like because like, I like comics. But we, so we're ready Marvel to argue, equals comics. We're ready to argue that topic with you all day. But that's the point. Is we like the fact that you have an opinionated stance because I appreciate that. I, for me personally, when I'm watching YouTubers, I don't like the people who just try to play the middle, middle the vanilla yeah, Don't middle. be wishy-washy, man. Stand for yeah. something. Yeah, let me know what, what you think, what you like. So, I want to take this time now. We've, we've had some great topics. We want to, again, thank JB and Drew for coming on this, this podcast episode. Oh, thanks for having but us. I also want to take yeah, this time like we man. always do and give you guys the floor to tell us, let us know what you guys got going on in your channels. You guys each have separate channels. If you have Comic Core mutual content going on, let the viewers know where can they find you and what you guys got going on. Drew, we'll start with you. Well, you can find me on my own channel, Drew Manchu, or uh, Instagram at Drew Manchu, or on Twitter at Drew Manchu Comics. And, uh, and yeah, if you want to hit me up, and I'm, I'm always down to collab. Uh, I've got nothing going on right now with all this coronavirus nonsense. And we're getting ready to leave here, and I'm going to go over to uh, the Comic Corps to do our Monday Night Live show which is my favorite show of the week. I do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm on Friday nights. I'll pop up on JB's channel every once in a while. I'm, I'm on S&B Network. But I really only want to talk about Monday nights on the Comic Core. We're doing a show called Modern Men. Uh, it's a play off of our Golden Guys show, which is a Golden Age Collector's show. But Modern Men focuses on the iconic stories of the modern age and the modern age of collecting. And we have really great conversations every week. But we also pick a uh, trade paperback or a, a story arc to review each week. And we were doing that through a randomizer. We just recently started using the community tab to put a poll up. Today, we're going to be talking about death of Superman. So uh, go after this is posted, go back, look at the rewind. One of the most epic stories of the past couple decades is the death of Superman. We're going to be talking about that in depth today, as well as our favorite, uh, 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 cartoons that are based on comics uh, and next week will be our 25th episode and we're going to be talking x-men everything on the poll will be an x-men story so make sure you check out that comic core community tab vote in the poll and be sure to join us on monday nights it's probably the best way that i've gotten to read a bunch of titles that i've had on my to-do list or my to reread list that I wouldn't have gotten to otherwise. It's a fantastic show. Comic Man Andy's on there. Most of the time we got Discovery Bay. Carson uh, Seawood19 is on there as well. And we, we just have a lot of fun, man. It's uh, my favorite show to do every week, so be sure to check that out. Awesome. JB, what do you got going on? You're like the busiest man on YouTube, Oh, I think. my goodness. I've been so busy. So um, if you're not familiar with the channel, check it out. The channel was the, the concept of the channel was to shout out all the other channels to actually be a channel guide. So I maintain a couple of playlists pretty religiously. Um, one of them is the top picks. And it's not just top picks in the combo community, but I like to do Funko Pop uh, creators, um, statue um, content creators. And I'll put my top picks in that playlist. But the playlist that everybody's really coming to look for is the very first thing you're going to see on my channel is the comic book community live stream playlist. And I keep this thing updated pretty religiously during the course of the day. When a live stream ends, I'll put it at the end. When someone's notification comes up that they got something coming up, I'm going to put it in there. And there's a couple of ways for you to use this. One, if you're thinking of putting out content, go see who you're going to go up against. Because you may not want to go up against Bueller on a Friday night. You know, you may want to go before Bueller on a Friday night or after Bueller on a Friday night. Um, or if you're familiar, if you like the comic book community because of the chat in the live show, which is why I was drawn to it, this is where all the live shows are going to be listed for the night. And I pretty much am sub to everybody and I maintain the list pretty religiously. So that 
is the basis of the channel. And to do that, I highlight it with a couple of shows. One, Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Eastern, I do a morning show. The title is Good Morning um, Comic Book Community or YouTube Comic Book Community. And it's really a what's on today kind of show. And I start by going over my, my page, the top picks in the live streams. And then I break for uh, an Instagram tag of the day segment where people can tag me on Instagram and I'll highlight those tags. And then to close the show, I kind of open up a random package because I buy a lot of comic books. And that's every morning, uh, five days a week. Now in the middle of the day, I'm either selling comic books, sorting comic books for a pop-up shop that I run. And it's a, it's a cool little innovative way that I've figured out to sell comic books. Today was a, an example of what has happened. The comic book community is, is so much in a given away. Today's show was actually purchased by members of the community, and then they turned around and gave all the books away. So right before I got on this stream, I spent three hours giving comic books away. And you're like, what? What? Correct. Check it out on the rewind. Check out the page. I'm sure it's going to happen again. And this is the second time it's happened. And that's a pop-up shop that I do right in the middle of the day. And the last thing that I have that I want to throw out there is every once in a while, JB goes disco after dark with a late night comic book chat. You know, it's every once in a while, maybe you have a drink or two or three or four. Or we won't talk about how many we've had, but I like to go, uh, get out there and uh, just, just have a good time with the comic book community. Most, most likely uh, get a bunch of people in there and get four or six up on the on the screen and just go for a couple hours chatting it up and that's a disco after dark so i got plenty of content on the channel if you're not familiar with it please check it out yeah so links to both of their socials will be in the description of this video so make sure you guys check those out check out their individual channels and then of course check out the comic core channel right jack Oh, absolutely. That is an absolute must uh, channel to check out. I'm subscribed. Check out all the videos. And you know what the great thing about the Comic Core is, of course, they are now monetized and all of the financial benefits of the channel go to the Hero Initiative, a great charity that really supports comic creators. Yeah, it's We're actually a little handy uh, here to, soon. to make a deal with the Hero Initiative to, to find a way to support LCSs in this trying time as well so we are currently looking for avenues to be more charitable and uh give maybe lcs is the opportunity to get together and sell things on our channel if they don't have a, a you know a proper uh uh, uh setup to uh to you know, you know social media imprint to they don't have a footprint for this thing it's kind of hard you get on there you start an auction and three people show up you know so we we have over a thousand subscribers we have the ability to put more eyes on it. So we're trying to reach out to the community and see if there's anything we can do to help these retailers as well in their time of need. So we're always looking to, uh, to add people and shows and content to the comic core. If you guys are interested, anybody out there is interested. If you're a content creator and you just feel like you're not getting your bang for your buck, you can come talk to us, be part of a show that has a thousand and, uh, and above subscriber base to supplement your your viewers and it's a great way to get out there to meet other comic book creators and it's totally a community channel um and that's why we didn't feel like it was it was right for us to take money from our monetization just because like who gets the money who put in the most work this week or who said the funniest thing on you know the friday show like who do we cut a, a three dollar check to we would rather cut that three dollar check to to the hero initiative or some other charitable organization um because this is just our way of uh getting together and uh and having a good time and talking comics and just i, I know i had my shout out time but just uh one more thing there is that comic core is uh is giving you at least four weekly uh chat shows live chat shows so monday we do modern men tuesday is a golden guys golden age chat wednesdays we have the greatest comic book show ever which is a really really funny if you're into inside community jokes show uh, and then friday night we do the round table discussion show with uh our our a show crew i like to call it so uh we're always doing something different over there and uh, we got man there's three more nights of the week we got to fill with content. So if anybody wants to uh, use our platform to uh, get their name out there, hit us up, any one of us. Yeah, like I said at the beginning of the show, Comic Core is basically the Wu-Tang of YouTube comic channels. And we've talking, 
we met a lot of you guys. We love Comic Core. In fact, we plan to have more Comic Core channel. <laughs> I'll say owners, but more members of the Comic Core on this podcast because there's so many great members. We want to get them on here. Love having that conversation. Again, I want to thank Drew. I want to thank JB. Definitely check out their channels, like their content. Make sure you subscribe, click that bell notification for them. So that way you'll be notified when their videos drop on their channels as well as that Comic Core. With that being said, this is Jack and Brian, Simple Man's Comics and Friends. We'll see you guys in the next video.